Let's now discuss the notable performance parameters of a motor. Power. The rating associated with the power of a motor is expressed generally in terms of watts or kilowatts. This power is the input power which is in electrical terms. If you go through the data sheet of a motor, you will see primarily two types of power ratings. The first will be continuous power which is the power rating at which one can run the motor for theoretically infinite amount of time if the motor is for heavy duty 24 by 7 application. The second aspect will be peak power, the power which can be given to the motor only for a certain time duration. We generally see this in form of a graph plotted against the RPM. Similar to power ratings, we have two types of ratings for torque as well, continuous and peak. They are used in the same context. We can get the continuous torque for long durations but are limited to shorter durations for peak torque. The reason we cannot sustain at peak power or peak torque is that the machine is designed only to continuously work at the continuous torque. It has the ability to go beyond its continuous rated value but in that case the machine is not equipped to deal with this instance of very high heat dissipation. Remember that copper losses are in a direct squared proportion of each other. Thus an increase in current by a factor of 2 will lead to quadrupling the heat losses. This might lead to problems like in extreme cases a thermal runaway in the motor controllers and associated power electronics. The thermal runaway is a phenomenon that is accelerated by increased temperature in turn releasing energy that further increases the temperature. Thermal runaway occurs in situation where an increase in temperature changes the condition in a way that causes a further increase in temperature, often leading to a destructive re result. It is a kind of uncontrolled positive feedback. Now you don't want that to happen by persisting to use a machine at peak ratings. Thus, after a burst of few seconds, the machine retracts back to its roots of continuous power rating. We can also argue that why can't we have motors or electrical machines which can operate at peak ratings for longer. Basically, we are making our peak the new continuous, right? We should realize that for this newly designed motor which has its continued, continuous rating at its earlier peak, it will have its own new peak as well. In this process of increasing the sizing of the motor, we have made the motor heavier, bulkier and costlier. The leeway to this problem is the load demand in an automotive application. We actually don't need to have access to peak ratings for longer durations. If you look at where the vehicle needs the maximum torque, it is at the very start when your vehicle is at a standstill and you slam the accelerator pedal to the metal. The second instance is uh, when you are trying to scale a steep gradient with a fully loaded vehicle. We never utilize the peak ratings for a longer duration. Fortunately, our requirements overlap with those offered by electrical machine. And we exploit this to our fullest. We will delve deeper into this topic later in the explanation for how different are traction motors than industrial motors. I would also like to clear a common misconception. Conception. When you observe a motor's torque versus RPM curve, the motor is allowed to work at all XY coordinates in the area under the curve in the first quadrant. The line highlights the boundary condition. If a plot says that the torque at 1000 RPM is 100 Newton meter, then that means at 1000 RPM, the motor can deliver any torque from 0 to 100 Newton meter, depending on the load and not just, and it's not restrained to 100 Newton meter only. We can come back to the topic of performance uh, parameters of a motor. Let us take some time to appreciate this graph of an induction motor's torque versus RPM. It is just so perfect for that, for what an EV needs. They were made for each other. Uh, why have we not adopted them a long time back? The efficiency is the ratio of power output to the input power. In case of an electric motor, 
we can see the following aspects where we observe losses. Copper losses are because of the resistance of the stator where the power escapes in the form of heat. The losses in the stator and rotor iron cores are called core losses. They are due to space fundamental and harmonic fluxes. These losses consist of hysteresis loss, eddy current loss and excess loss. Hysteresis and eddy current losses are proportional to frequency and square of frequency respectively. Mechanical loss in an electrical machine basically consists of bearing friction and windage loss. The windage that is the friction loss is the power required to rotate the air through the machine and ventilating ducts. Windage loss is approximately proportional to the square of speed of rotation of the machine. These losses are in form of heat and sound. As we know, when an electrical machine is loaded, load current flowing in the stator winding of the machine produces an MMF which distorts the space distortion of MMF produced or set up by the stator winding in the air gap. This distortion of space distribution of MMF or flux density wave in the air gap of the machine leads to increased losses in core as well as in rotor conductors from its no load value. This increment in the core loss caused by the distortion of air gap flux plus the increment in the ohmic loss that is I square R loss due to non-uniform distribution of conductor current is called stray load loss. Thus, whatever is left after subtracting these losses from the input is the output power of the motor generally termed in torque and RPM. Let us have a look where the efficiency of an electric motor lies compared to its competitor prime movers. The bicycle is the holy grail in terms of its efficiency where more than 90% of what is put into it is consumed. Next we can clearly see from the right side of the chart the advances the human discoveries have made over time. We can see one peculiar jump in the number of numbers bumping from diesel engines to electric motors. Adopting electric motors, even if we grab the least advanced motor, it's safely going to be having more than double the efficiency of the most advanced technology driven diesel or gasoline engine. With further improvements in technology happen rapidly as we speak, the gap between them is going to increase further. The combustion technology has already saturated and its rate of increase is exponentially decaying. Thus, it's a no-brainer where the future lies. We have numbers to prove our point. We can see one example how the losses are reduced and the efficiency increased. There are multiple variations or iterations done. Variables such as materials, orientations, dimensions, geometry, control strategies, etc. are iterated. Here, we can visually map the reduction in core losses by changes in material from magnetic steel sheet uh, teeth to amorphous metal teeth. A reduction in losses by almost 70 to 20 percent is observed. These small and big gains add up to significant contributions. Also consider the fact that the cooling system can also be shrunk down in sizing if the heat generated in itself is reduced. The effects are doubly beneficial. Having a look at this plot can give us an idea about where we should concentrate to minimize losses based on the operating conditions of the motor. We did not need to focus on all the loss making entities. After identifying the most frequent operating area, we can make overall progress by improving the overlapping aspects only. The type and construction of motor can be optimized based on the load condition.